It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Thorat and Mary Joe Foley are here. They're going to explain what Microsoft meant when they said anybody can have Windows 10 free. It's not as easy as all that. We even have flowcharts. Stay tuned. Windows Weekly is next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therod and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 419, recorded June 24th, 2015. Dueling Flowcharts. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Blue Apron. Blue Apron will send you all the ingredients to cook fresh, delicious meals with simple step-by-step -step instructions right to your door. See what's on the menu this week and get your first two meals free by going to blueapron.com slash twit. That's blueapron.com slash twit. And by Squarespace. Squarespace is the place to get a beautiful website or online store. Start your trial before June 30th and get a free year of custom email and business tools on their professional or business plan. Plus, enter the offer code WINDOWS and get 10% off. Squarespace, build it beautiful. It's time for Windows Weekly. You want to know what's going on at Microsoft? Hey, so do we. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, join the party. <laughs> but at least we have educated guesses from the two top Windows journalists in the world, Mary Jo Foley from allaboutmicrosoft.com. The Ziff Davis Z. I'm sure. I guess you don't call it Ziff Davis. ZD stands for nothing. Yeah. ZDNet yeah, ZD blog. Yeah. Hello, Mary Jo. Hello. And on her left, in the blue trunks, Paul Thorat <laughs> from Thorat. Hello. Dot com. Hello, Paul and Mary Jo. Hello. Good to see you again. Of course, uh, this has been. <laughs> I've been tagging stories for Windows Weekly all week long. Even though you don't yeah. ask me, I. I noted there I, in are. In fact, I'm actively opposed to it. But please continue. <laughs> there, are, there are. I noticed a few show, a few stories uh, to talk about today. Yeah. In fact, it's so complicated that for the first time ever, you guys have, are using visual aids. <laughs> visual aids. In the right. show notes. In the show notes. Just to understand what it is we're talking about. <laughs> hey, you're going to. Uh, I should say this is my last Windows Weekly for a few weeks. Mm -hmm. um, I think guess for three Suspiciously, weeks. Suspiciously, I will be gone as well. And you'll be in Ireland, mm -hmm. and I'll be in Germany. Did you just say Ireland with air quotes? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I'm really going to be in Ireland. <laughs> Ireland, and yeah, uh, yeah. Or as and we call it here, East Boston. East Boston. Uh, that'll be fun. Where in Ireland are you going? Uh, all over the south. You know, Galway nice. over to Dublin, around fun. the South Bend. Oh, I'm back. so jealous. Yeah. Love to do that. Sometime. You, yeah, but you're going on an awesome. We're doing river a riverboat like, down the Rhine. Yeah, I want to do that someday. The Danube. Yeah, you know, I've I've done a riverboat once, just for a few days in on the Europe? Nile. Oh, really? In Egypt, um, and it was wow. it was cool. It was fun. Um, yeah. It's different than an ocean cruise because it's you're going a lot slower <laughs> for one thing. Sure. And you're going and you kind of land. The countryside is right there, going by you the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to do that. Yeah, I can't wait. I'll 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 give you a feedback, and I'm gonna do sways and. All You're gonna that. post up on oh, cool. uh, Facebook or whatever, right? Yeah, although yeah. I'm thinking, I've been trying to figure, you know, solve this. So and you end up in, you said Amsterdam Budapest. to Budapest. Budapest, awesome. Pest. And uh, in preparation for Budapest, Lisa and I have been practicing drinking Tokai. <laughs> oh, Practice makes perfect. Is that stuff good? <laughs> oh, 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 baby, we nice. had a Tokai the other day. The fanciest you can get. They rate Was the it a George Tokai. George Tokai. Oh my! They rate Tokai, <laughs> oh, which is a sweet dessert wine, um, yeah. by amount of sugar in the Tokai. Sure, that's how they rate it. You can tell it's good when you have to like crack the surface of it just to get it the liquid. The best Tokai <laughs> they give you in a spoon. Yeah. Oh, wow. There's like this glass. There's this whole thing. It's like honey or something. Or yeah, yeah. it's like how you high taste alcohol is it? It must be really not very. High. High. It's not very. It's high. But it's mostly yeah. sugar, right? Oh, is it? Yeah, it sounds like it'd be really. It's high probably alcohol. twenty percent. I don't know. Yeah. I have to. You know, that's a good question. Yeah. It's not a fortified wine like a porter, or a Madeira, or a sherry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's just a sweet wine. It's botrytis. It's the the noble rot that makes it sweet. 
I think I have that. I, we all do, baby. <laughs> There's the a beer Noble called Rot. Noble Rot. Is there really? <laughs> there is. From Dodge if they were witty, it would be the Noble Rot, W-R-O-U-G-H-T. <laughs> yeah. Noble w Rot. Yes. It's Noble Rot. All right. So the, I think you're going to cover the big story today. I'm just guessing, which is what the hell? Uh, well, I mean, we can we can bat it back and forth. But I, I guess my contention here is this is a lot simpler than people are making it out to be. And Let's the real story is that... About. Yeah. Stop. So Friday, oh, sorry. <laughs> Friday there was a. Microsoft oh, you can't read my mind, people. What's up? <laughs> no, I can't. No, they know what you're talking about, which is the blog post that came out of Microsoft on Friday, that basically well, I, implied. Leo, sorry, sorry to interrupt so quickly. Yes. Came out on Friday. Came out again on Friday. Came out as a new post on Monday. Uh, I think Saturday. Right, go ahead. Was yeah. <laughs> and, and if you read it closely, and I was, you know, I'll be honest, because I was trying to talk about it on the radio show, and I knew that you two would have something to say about this, because we've sort of seen this before, Microsoft before said or implied that if you had pirated copies of Windows, you would be made whole somehow by Windows 10. Leo, then they retracted it. I have it. now, in the year 2015, written three articles called something along the, very, uh, along the lines of, no, Microsoft is not giving Windows 10 to pirates. <laughs> three times. I, I know. Right well, get oh ready, God. because now the implication is anybody who's a Windows insider, I think this, I read it as closely as I could, and this seemed to be un un Here's unequivocal. People, okay. If you're a Windows Insider guy, person, and you can still sign up for it, by the way, today, yep. you will get Windows 10 for free, full license, end of, mm -hmm. end of sentence. Is that true? There's a, there's a lot more to it than that. Nope. But here, um, <laughs> I, knew, I, knew, I knew it wasn't, but it sure read like that. Yep. I, Microsoft... I, here's my take on this. I, 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 we don't, I don't know if Gabe actually wrote that post or it's probably a group thing and Gabe's tweet. name goes on it. was a tweet, it was a tweet too, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, there's he, he, right. Gabe does a good job of getting into the trenches and tweeting with people and all that too. Yeah, good so for him, yeah. The, the problem is, like, you know, the product group guys, they're not thinking licensing. They're, they're interacting with enthusiasts. They want people to be excited about this. They, they do have genuinely good news to share with these people. I, I think I had made the somewhat cynical comment uh, some number of months ago when Microsoft explicitly said, hey, Windows Insiders are going to get this thing for free, dot, 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 like everyone else on Earth. You know, like, in other words, there's nearly nothing special about being on the Insider program except that you're getting a look at it before it, it ships. But as far as, you know, it coming out, I mean, you're not going to, there's no special privilege per se that we know about. I mean, I have a secret belief that they will, in fact, give insiders the final build, you know, days or weeks early, but that's just me projecting. Um, but as far as this stuff goes, um, uh, to me, it's pretty clear cut. You know, uh, a genuine PC running Windows 7 with SP1 or 8.1 can be upgraded to Windows 10 for free. Windows Home or Pro, depending on which version you have. I, I think the, and I'm, now here I'm, I want to be clear about when I'm sort of uh, making an educated guess versus just stating a fact. Um, I do have a belief that there may be one kind of hidden benefit of being on the Insider program, which is that to date they've only given us the Pro builds. So if you had uh, a PC with Windows 7 Home and you ran Insider Preview, you would get Pro. And when the RTM version comes out, it's not like they're going to downgrade you to Home. You're going to get Pro. And there's a little there's a little $40 benefit for you there, I suppose, if you want to look at it that way. But, but it um, actually does say that, right? So we're, hmm? that's, an, that's a guess on your part. A it's a guess. That's a what projection, I meant. Yes. some might say. Yeah. Yes, that's my. That's a guess. I think it's um, a good guess, but it. But it's the reason. I, the, and the reason I, I'll just just to give you the logic behind it. <laughs> um, they have stated repeatedly, you'll be able to upgrade from uh, pre-release version to the final. Mm -hmm. Well, the pre-release version is pro. You can't upgrade from a pro to home. So, uh, it's a guess. But I, I think that would be just a nice idea to give the people who actually spent the time to test the programs, et cetera, et cetera. But with regards to you know. Uh, pirates suddenly their ears perk up and hear, oh, well, you mean if I get on the Insider program now, I'll be able to get this thing for free? Um, the way that this thing, remember that that post originally talked about how things are going to change in the next build. And in the next build, you're going to have to somehow connect to a Microsoft account. You don't have to sign in with that account, but you have to connect it somehow. And they're going to make this connection up in the cloud between your account and the hardware ID on the machine. Um, and the reason they're doing it is is, is for this purpose of determining whether this PC is genuine and can be upgradable uh, to the final version of uh, Windows 10. If it's not, what you're going to get is an eval version of Windows 10 that times out after a certain period of time. And that's, I think, what the misinterpretation or the mistake that people are making. Because, they hear, because you know, Microsoft, Gabe, or whoever said, you know, we're going to let those machines upgrade. And they are. But not to a fully activated, genuine version of Windows. They're going to, be, uh, they're going to go up to an eval version. That thing is still not going to be genuine. It's still going to be, you know, if you want to get that thing legitimately, you're still going to have to pay for Windows 10 in some capacity. 
they've, they've uh, not hinted, but said vaguely that they are going to work with, I think it was PC makers to provide some way for pirates to go legit and maybe it'll be a little less expensive or whatever, but we don't know what that is. Um, I just, I mean, to me, the story here is they just, they still do a pretty crappy job of communicating. This, yeah, you know, this, is, this, this is really the same exact thing that happened with the, but previously with the, you know, the, you know, making them whole thing. Yeah. This is yeah, the same it's like story. It's a roller coaster if, that doesn't stop, Leo. If you're, <laughs> it keeps going around and around. If you're a legit owner, you continue to be a legit owner. If you're not, you won't have a auth. You know, you won't have a yeah authenticated. The one version. thing I, I just say to people is, uh, in general, too, is this. Um, you know, January or July 29th is not some magic date, right? Um, you should wait and see what Speak happens. Speak for yourself, <laughs> for the rot. Well, no. In other words, <laughs> there's no. It, you don't. Ha this yeah. doesn't have to be figured out before then. It doesn't have to be figured right. out on that day. If you're on the Windows Insider program or not, um, why don't you wait and see what happens, right? Because we have a lot of people out there who have the Get Windows Now uh, advertisement, and they're going to get it probably. Uh, we have a bunch of people that don't. If you have an HP Stream 11 or 13 laptop, an HP Stream 7 tablet, Acer or a lot of 7. other mini tablets. Yep. What's that? Acer 7, we don't have it. Nope. Okay. Um, so there are people that, you know, what's going to happen to you on July 29th? You know, I don't know. Um, I have, I have a, a strong suspicion that the vast majority of those people who are questioning what's going to happen are just going to get it and it's going to be no problem at all. Yeah. Uh, because part, it behooves Microsoft to yeah. do that. So the reason I don't think this was as straightforward <laughs> as you do <laughs> is, well, first they changed the blog post once without Twice. telling anyone. Know, um, and then they changed it again. And then they rewrote it, right? So I think they realized, like you're saying, that the gray area that they... They just keep dancing around it instead of just saying it out like pirates. You're not getting this. Boom. Just right, let's right. say that and finish. Done. We're done with that. The, the gray area to me is people who are running XP and Vista who are in the insider program. Right. right. So they're here. They're testing. They've been testing all along. They've been getting the new builds. And I guess the way the post was written initially made me think they were going to be kind oh. of grandfathered in. That's what you I weren't thought. alone. To well, be very clear, I, I think virtually that. everyone thought that. But they are not. Now we know. It says in the last version of this blog post, if you're on XP or Vista, nope, this isn't the way to get genuine and this isn't the way to get Windows 10. Right. Even if you're an insider, even if you've been testing course, with us. and there are a couple blah. of points to be made. First of all, almost everybody at one time mm. or another has owned a legitimate copy of Windows. It's pretty dang but, hard to buy a PC without it. So really the question is more not whether they're pirates but whether their yeah. pre-Windows 7 version can be upgraded true, in some true. way. Well, yeah, so, like okay. if you're a system builder or, or yeah. you build your own PC, yeah. right? And then the second right, issue, but... and then the second issue, <laughs> yeah. no, I know, but then the second <laughs> thing is, this isn't where Microsoft makes the bulk of its money, so it wasn't no. completely incredible no, that but they I, might I think they have a legal that. obligation. I think the issue was, you know, they put out these blog posts and it's all rah-rah cheerleader stuff for the most part, or just a little announcement, no one cares. This one actually touched on licensing issues. Yeah. And I think at some point they had to get involved with lawyers or whatever. And they said, look, you can't, you can't say it like this. You have to. Right. Be <laughs> I think you clear. nailed it at the beginning, Paul, when you said that these guys like Gabe are really enthusiasts and yeah. they're excited and they're not saying the legalese properly. Nobody right. wants to think about this stuff. But yeah. Yeah. by the way, you know, it's, I like some I time ago. show, though. This is Paul's flow chart. <laughs> it's it's Not it's there's a, a a blob that says free and then there's an arrow that points to yes now i'm going to show mary joe's a flow chart which is mm, yeah, well. this is from yeah another guy uh who goes by lab Null on twitter oh, who lab did Null, this yeah today. this is yeah. a little less simple <laughs> and that's not but even by the way really as no cool and this is this is really still pretty basic but um yeah, I, I actually, this is very accurate. Um, this is so straightforward. If And it's exactly what everybody's been saying. If you are running Windows 7 or later and you have a yep. genuine copy, you'll get a free upgrade. Everybody mm -hmm. else, you got to buy it. Period. So, uh, by the way, uh, you you meant, you said earlier uh, something to the effect of every one of us has bought probably many versions of Windows right. uh, at some point. The truth is, that's... Most of us actually haven't. Um, oh, most well, of I mean, us we, acquire we have, a, we have it with right, a PC. Have a is copy what I mean. somehow. Yeah, yeah. Le, but it's legit, well, right? Uh, not exactly. Uh, I mean, it's it, it may not be exactly legit for the purposes that you're maybe ah. trying to use it for. In ah. other words, you bought a uh, when you got buy a computer, that version of Windows is tied to that computer. Period. There's no you can't change that. Ah. Um, so yeah. that computer could be upgraded. And right. 
I had asked for a clarification on how this system was going to work. And if you think about how, uh, this is probably a couple months ago now. If you think about how product activation works, if you were, if you were to go into a store and buy a copy of Windows and you bring it home, um, you install it on your computer and you activate it and it works, right? It makes a connection to the internet and something happens and it says yes. Uh, you would further understand that if you were to walk to a second, a third, a fourth, fifth computer, whatever it was, install that same version of Windows, use that same product key, it does not work. Right. It will say, no, this version of Windows has already been activated. Well, how do they know Good that? Good point. Right? Good point. It's up in, it, it's in the cloud somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. It, but it's not just the product key, right? It's a combination of the product key and what, I'm, what I call the hardware ID. I'm just trying to simplify it. But it is a, a, a set of information about various components in your system. They mesh it together and they come up with like some kind of a number, a value, whatever it is. And uh, if you go back later and you s try to activate that same version of Windows on that same computer, it could be two years later, it could be in a dual boot the next day, it doesn't matter. They'll make that comparison because that's what's in the cloud, right? It's the two things, product key and the hardware ID. Um, as long as they're the same or over time close enough, you can activate electronically. And if they're not, you will have to call and explain, oh yeah, I replaced the motherboard or the hard drive or whatever it was It triggered this. And they'll usually, and, you know, I think Microsoft pretty much just says, fine, if you have uh, the gumption to actually call them on the phone. So mm -hmm. the way that this was described to me for Windows 10 is that it's going to work the same way. For some reason, they used the phrase Windows Store. They said that this was stored in Windows Store, but they said that the combination was your Microsoft ID, which explains why they're requiring that Microsoft account on this next build, and the hardware ID, uh, ID associated with your computer. And the, the notion here is it's going to work like product. It is because it literally is product activation, except now they're tying it to a Microsoft account. And that's the different bit. And so you, as the owner of this thing, have upgraded it to Windows 10. Now you, as the owner of this thing, two months, two years, whatever down the road, want to do a clean install. You download the ISO. You install it. There's no. It doesn't ask you for a product key. You go to activate it. it you've signed in. You, know, you have to associate the same Microsoft account, right? It checks, it works, and you're good to go. And that's how it's going to work. And it's not actually that complicated. I mean, the only, I mean, there are questions, of course. We, we don't, I don't have it here to see how it works, but that's how it was explained to me. And I, it doesn't sound that complex. No. And, and, you know, the part that trips people up is the way Microsoft licenses software is to the device, right? And right. you think it's to you, but it's not. It's to the device. And that's, and that's, what that's I meant, why. To Leo's yes, right. exactly. Right. And, and so people are saying, here's another one of those edge cases. Hey, I've been testing Windows 10 on this machine, but I actually want to run it on this machine. <laughs> exactly. <right? laughs> yep. When it comes out. But no, you can't. You have to run it on the machine you've been testing it on. Or right. if you have a legitimate copy of Windows 7 or Windows 8.1, well, that machine, you have to have go get another copy. Like it's to the yes, machine. But, uh, right. In other words, it's not associated with you alone. It's like no. two-factor authentication. Uh, the machine is right. part of it. But I would also add to that, 99% of the time, if it's July 29th or later with the first year, they go to upgrade. Everyone gets it for free. So if that thing was a Windows 7 PC or a Windows mm -hmm. 8 1 PC, yeah. you're good to go. You're going to get it if you want it. Yeah, for free. If you're a consumer and not a business. It's funny there's it. so much conversation about this because isn't it also the case that most Windows users don't ever upgrade. They just use the version <laughs> that came with their computer yeah. until the new computer yeah. comes. Well, but that's the thing. I think yeah. the, the thing that's driving this conversation is a... Um, it's enthusiasts. Small, right, the sm a small yeah. part of the user base that has different concerns and different uh, usage patterns than the rest. You know, we've got people... I, I mean, I, I, within sight of me, I probably have more than a dozen computers. Um, you know, people who are like that, well, I, I could tell Mike, they're going to screw me over somehow. You know, I'm not going to be able to get this. This computer came with Windows 8.0, I'm screwed. You know, um, I, I, right. Honestly, I, look, some of us, you may have to jump through a couple of hoops, right? I mean, uh, I have a three-year-old uh, Samsung Ultrabook that came with Windows 7. Actually, it came with SB1, but pretending that it didn't, I suppose at, at some point I might have to install Windows 7 and then install, you know, go restore it back to the original Samsung image, put um, SP1 on there, run some updates, and then upgrade for free. And then once I've done that, by the way, I can then clean install Windows 10 on there for the lifetime of the device. Or the, li I said, that's another weird gray area. Right, but, lifetime of the device. Uh, we still don't know what that oh, is. What is that? <laughs> what is, you know, we don't know. To, in other words, they're saying on that device, period, right? Yeah. Is what they're really but saying. The yeah. lifetime And is there an afterlife the of these devices? We don't know. We don't, there's yeah. no afterlife. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, there isn't. 
Um, I don't know, too, Paul, if you've done this. I just did this yeah. the other day because someone suggested this. So, you know, the uh, get Windows 10 icon when you have it on one of your machines. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the way you can uh, look at the compatibility test is to click on that hamburger menu in the upper yes. left. Yep. Now, what it, it used to look like when away. I clicked there, it looks <laughs> yeah. totally different now. Oh, does it? Yes. And now can it has pay, like a menu. Take a screenshot would you paste that? I, I can't look at it on this computer, so... Yeah. Can you paste it's it into a menu. the notes? I just... Yeah, I will. Well, let me, um, let me look at mine menu. here. Wait a minute. There's a menu, and it has instructions about upgrading now. But before, mine on this machine that I'm doing it on right now said to me, when you do the upgrade, this isn't going to work, and this isn't going to work, and uh, now it doesn't say that anymore. That was the compatibility checker. Well, I, I yeah, and I remember what we talked about yeah. this when that first appeared, and, and on yep. this particular computer, the, the one thing that had come up for me was the video card, which is a run-of-the-mill, out-of-the-box right. AMD, whatever yep. it is, Radeon card of some, or ATI Radeon. Um, yep. Obviously, it's going to work fine. Um, and so I think what's happened is the compatibility stuff is, you know, getting finalized and, and probably see more and more right. devices supported. And, you know. Yep. And it's saying, you know, we think some things may work now that we didn't think were going to work before. That so let's see here. I'm getting, so yeah, when I click this. on it, I get... This little, so in the this upper left corner, there's there should be that. Uh, do you see the hamburger? I can't see the top of the screen in the. Uh, thing, but... Let me slide this down. Uh, yes, there's the hamburger. Yeah, so click on that. Okay, but but uh, this is what you're talking about, Mary Jo. This new thing, this menu. Yeah. It says, get Windows yeah. 10. Check your upgrade status. Go to Windows Update. Uh, get yeah. to know Windows 10. That's new. You're right. And that was just it from is. clicking on that icon. Yep. Uh, and, and before this, mine this, said like this won't install and this won't install. It actually listed anymore. programs. Yeah. Somewhere. So yeah, that's is, completely different. This is a new yep. app. Yeah. Yeah. So yep. upgrade for free, familiar and easy, designed for speed, amazing new features, apps and games, how it works. Here's the thing yeah, check, you were talking yeah, about. That. Check your PC. And of course, this is a, a late model. This is the Dell XPS 13. Yeah. So I mean, to me, that looks like what the screen I saw. But that's the one that, that flashed up system very yeah, quickly. That, <laughs> used to not work. Right. Yeah. But before, mine listed specific names of apps. It said, right. yep. this it Dell app. Oh, really? Apps? apps. And, now, yeah. go, and now they're fixed, I guess. Or they think they may fix them in time. New confirmation. Guess. It's like an RSVP. Yeah. Your yeah. upgrade <laughs> is reserved. This is where you would cancel it if for some reason you Yeah. They make that it. easy to find, too. <laughs> yeah. Buried deep in there. Yeah. Um, sure. But it's good. It shows things are evolving. Like they keep adding more compatibility, let's hope, right? right? Rapid release. And so what this has now become is more of like a little sales pitch. It is. And a how-to also, right? Yeah. Like, hey, this yeah, what to this do. Yeah, this is like, here's all the stuff you need yep. to know. So as we get closer, this is interesting. This is this little app is changing. Yeah. This little app yep. of mine. They're going to make says it now, shine. <laughs> it says now you can get it for free instead of, and then there's a price that's crossed out. That's $119. New that's yep. new. That's well, because they've announced the pricing since they right. released. Well, actually, they released those at the same time, didn't they? Yeah. I think the they pricing did. information. Yeah. So, but you're right. That wasn't there before. No. And of course, I guess in the UK and in Europe, uh, the price is reflected in local currency. Yeah. So we're starting to see posts about that as well. There also is a disclaimer. Yes, free. Full version of Windows 10. Not a trial. Three gigabyte right. download required. Internet access fees may apply. Estimated retail price of Windows 10. Home. Full license. Actual price may vary. So that's I, I wish Microsoft would, as part of the download, ask you if you wanted to make an ISO right there. Mm, it'd be good. Oh, you know? wouldn't that be great? Well, yeah. wait a I minute mean, now. Just... Won't it uh, replace my Windows install partition, that hidden partition, with a new Windows 10 one? Yeah. So probably what it'll do is after the install, I bet you, it right, says, right. would you like to make a uh, you, rescue you still, uh, It still makes sense to make a... Just to a make a nice setup. Though. I mean, you need to make, you want to make a recovery <laughs> yeah. drive. You want to make, uh, here's you know, what you Apple does. And I don't know installs. if it's analogous, but when, uh, when Apple upgrades, uh, OS 10, it shows up in the app store. Uh, mm -hmm. when you download it, you get something that is in fact, is says install Yosemite. When you run it, it deletes it. But if you're savvy enough to know inside copy, there, yeah. there is an installer. You have to actually open the package, get the yeah. installer out and copy that. And you have to do it before you run the install because it'll delete it. As soon as you yeah, do it. so people have been doing this with the builds. Um, uh, they don't really. So far, they, ex with one exception, they've only released the ISO version of each build at the slow ring release. Right. 
mm -hmm. during the fast ring release, you can you can do basically what you're describing, and you can make an ISO out of the downloadable files that they provide I bet you through Windows Update. Thing. People have been doing that with every build, yeah. you know. So yeah. good advice is get, is find out how to do that and. Uh, if only someone install. were writing a book about this, Leo. Well, <laughs> is your book going to be out July 29th? Yes, it is. Oh, man. Oh, You're working wow. hard. Yep. Oh, there's even, have, here's a page. Like Windows, I'm going to have to keep updating. Yeah. <laughs> going forward. Here's an interesting <laughs> okay, uh, page be something there. if you scroll through this. How the free upgrade works. Reserve, you'll get a notification after July 29th, after Windows 10 is downloaded to your device. Install it right away or pick a time that's good for you. After that, it's what they're describing that? is that's yeah it's they, they're just describing the upgrade. In other they're words, not saying anything about uh, ISO or no. anything. But like they that, but yeah. they've said separately they've they've come they they have literally not said we will provide you with an ISO. Right. But they have said everything about they that. Have to. They, their language is it's very clear that they'll yeah. be a, a, yeah. And you, if they, they don't provide very an clearly, ISO, you, can install it. you will be able to make one. You just have to know ahead of time what to do. Yeah. 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 Um, I don't think they will. I think that's confusing for people. Yeah, and for this is we're going to know what it is before the 29th. I think the next build will even be a good uh, indication of yeah. how this is interesting. Going. The next build will be kind of the yeah, first test close. of this. System. The they're RTM, getting very close. yeah, yeah. Well, the leaked build is basically this. I mean, um, it is right. We, yeah. we, we we're getting this indication already. Um, what's what's happening? Good. All right, we get closer every minute. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally. We are. Yes, to we our are. own deaths and to <laughs> the release of Windows 10. And to July 29th. <laughs> right. Which hopefully, hopefully will not happen on the same day. <laughs> followed by some huge amount of time. <laughs> but again, most normal. Actually, what's different about it this time is that Microsoft is trying to get all those people who would not upgrade normally, wait till they get a new machine, yep. to upgrade right. now. That's what's really different this time yep. around. And I think yeah, that and, everything and, you see will be aimed at that group. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yep. Right. And that's the th right. By the way, that's a good point, because um, yeah, at, at this point in our lives, I suppose we should be able to uh, anticipate the types of questions we're going to get when Microsoft releases a post like this. But it is always interesting how the, the questions people ask, it's always like, geez, like, yeah, guys, they're just trying to make it simple for people. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, you're really overthinking this. Um, yeah, because I, we're I, different than th than. Th right. We're well, because like we other. all see our own particular situation, right? right? That's true. Too. I, okay, but you know, I haven't installed it on this one computer. What's going right. to happen with this one computer? I, right. And we, I think we, I think a lot of people secretly feel like Microsoft's going to screw them over somehow. You know, uh, and I don't, I really don't think that's going to be the case. Yeah. Although, okay, if I anything, mean, we, I think they're going to err in the other direction and lean toward be too generous loopholes that will let people in yeah. that shouldn't be in and all that right. kind of stuff. I, I, I really don't think it's going to be a, a hardship for legitimate customers. Good. Let's hope. <laughs> yes. Always skeptical. I just, I, I just, I, I don't know. Just because of the way this whole thing unfurled with this post, it's like, okay, this was only for one tiny group of people. It was super complicated because Microsoft licensing is super complicated. And then you're like, oh, I hope, I hope they just can work it out. I, I just keep thinking, how are they going to explain this branch yeah. thing to normal people? I know. Right? That's so stupid. I, 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 Mary I mean, Jo and I were talking privately about this, and, and within the span of five minutes, we came up with a dozen suggestions between <laughs> us about uh, how they could simplify this so easily and, and make everyone happy. It's just so simple. Right. But they, I think their hands have to be tied by some bizarre the lawyers. concern. I blame yeah. the lawyers. And there's yeah. weird it, it's things like tax be, considerations. Yeah. And there yes. are. When you yeah. give all stuff, kinds of stuff away, we don't understand. That's, yep, it's true. that has a consequence. Yep. And all of this stuff is yeah. much more arcane and bizarre. Yeah. And whether it's know. Gabe or anyone else in the product teams, yeah. I, I, you know, they clearly just want people to celebrate this and be happy with it. And uh, it must be bewildering, you know, to announce this <laughs> uh, a potential of over a billion people are going to get this thing for free yeah. in the next couple of months. And wow. God, they get yeah. a lot of complaints, you know? Yeah. Really? Come you on. You can't please anybody. It's free. <laughs> it's Microsoft. They've never screwed us over. <laughs> Why would they screw us over? <laughs> you know, though, this the little screen thing we were just talking about, the, the Get Windows 10 app. Think how awesome it would have been if they had done something like this for Windows 8. I know. Hey, here's how you use Windows 8. Here's uh, what's different. Yeah. Blah, blah. I made, think they learned their lesson on that one. Like, we got to give people happy. some hand-holding here and make this really yeah. pretty easy. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah, I, I, right. I mean, uh, Windows 8 will be studied for years to come. It, it, it's uh, <laughs> yeah. not just different. It's it, and it, it it's yeah. you know I used to I used to think of a Windows Phone like Windows Phone was different, but it was like better. You know, it was like a, yeah. 
really they really thought through the UI. Then Windows 8 is like, God, they use the same UI paradigm. It's just not better at all. Like it was just thrust on people. There was no explanation. People would, uh, you know, trigger the charms or maybe that switcher UI. <laughs> they had no idea how they did it. Or you what know, they were. That? That? You know, <laughs> and, or how to do it again, you know. And then sometimes uh, they were ghosted and sometimes they weren't. And people would call yep. and be like, what is, what is that? What's going I, on what, Am here? I doing something and, wrong? Yeah. yeah. So, yes. Yeah. So I think they're doing things differently this time and better. Despite right. setbacks like having to rewrite your blog post three times. I think still <laughs> better. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, yeah. sometimes they write. Yeah. They're trying. They are trying. Yep. Oh, I'm glad they're trying. In both <laughs> senses of the word, they're trying. Plus, you know, every time this happens, I get to use a picture of Johnny Depp in my, in my article. <laughs> really? The Dread Pirate, you know yeah. who? Yeah. yeah. Uh, somebody wants to know, Guy Smiley in our chat room, about dual boot situations. Can I keep my Windows 8 and dual boot into 10? There's a specialized <sighs> question. So, yeah. I mean, if you got so the ISO, is, you could. Yeah. Uh, yes. I mean, yeah, sure. So I mean, wait and see until it, whether we're going to get the ISO. I'm sure you the, could. The, question, the only question is going to be, would you have to upgrade the, that install first and then roll it back? Because, by the way, one of the new capabilities in Windows 10 is that for uh, uh, some period of time, I don't know if they said 30 days or some short period of time, you could change you're your able mind? to go back to the <gasps> previous release. <laughs> that's remarkable. Yeah, that's yeah. great. So hard you could get your machine space registered permitting. up in the cloud with your uh, Microsoft ID, and then you could run a clean install wow. and do it. Sure, I, I can't imagine why yeah. that wouldn't work. I mean, just you know, They're technologically. Gonna, uh, you know, in the past, they've validated previous installs of Windows by asking for the disk and things like yeah. that. They'll just ask for a product Please. key, right? Is that what how that's going? Well, see, we don't know. So, I, I, I know. honestly, I don't sure expect people to be given product keys. Those long because, keys, hopefully not. No, because I, I don't think like, that it makes any sense to do that. Why yeah. would you make so much? So the way that Windows setup works today, and when you know, in, in like these uh, leaks bills, for example, which I think point to where this is going, is if you have a product key, you can enter it because, of course, you might have bought it at retail, and in that case, it would come with a product key. Yeah. Um, but if you do this system where you're upgrading for free, again, remember you're tying your Microsoft account to the hardware ID up in the cloud, so this is never needed. And so when you run setup, do a clean install later you skip over that step and then it automatically activates because it's comparing that information in the cloud. You don't have to ever type in the number. So I don't really think there's yeah. a need for people to get a product ID and thus I don't believe they will get one. That said, uh, there are... Well, I'm just I'm talking Home and Pro. You just mean clear. the consumer. Yeah. Home and Pro. Yeah, the, the free upgrade offer. Um, uh, there are there are utilities that will grab your product key, and in, I bet there is one. And I suppose if you wanted it, you could have it. And I bet if you put it in during setup, it would probably work. But why why would you bother typing in a twenty five digit alphanumeric code if you don't have to? <laughs> my my it's thoughts fun. exactly. <laughs> I just like things to be activated immediately. You know what I really hate <laughs> when they put up a box to put in the code, and Microsoft does this. Uh, often, but not always, and you can't yeah. paste it in. Like you, no, you're, yeah, you have to sure. type yeah. it. Right. Sure. Like I have it. It's just I just want to paste it because yep. I've put it on a notepad. Uh, Leo, ma many times I've been sitting here in front of my computer with that box up on the screen, and it's like, yeah, where, now what? Yeah, where, <laughs> so yeah. where is that? So I'll because I'll, I keep these yeah. things in OneDrive, right? So yeah. I'll go to I'll like I'll go you to my phone. You need another device, yeah. And I'll yeah, or another device, and, and then you have my to phone, type I'll, it you know, in. I kind of zoom in so I can oh, see the number. Oh, you and me both. It's horrible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nightmare scenario. But you know what? We, we're describing something that normal people never have to go through. So that's yeah. not true. I bet you everybody listening to this show knows exactly. Normal people, not people listening to the show. <laughs> oh, normal people. <laughs> no, I mean you know, like average consumers. Real people. Uh, no, I honestly, I think most. people, Look, I, I'm sure there are average consumers <laughs> listening to the show, but I think a lot of the people listening to the show are technical, and if they can't admit that themselves, they're probably more technical than they think they oh, are. A hell of a lot more than probably and would anybody be able, we know. Yeah. Are, are nodding along in agreement to our story here yeah. that they've done this, they've done this before. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, uh, but they also understand that there may be their mother or their sister or brother or their father or whoever, someone who is not as technical as them, uh, that they know they may need to help them with that yeah. kind of thing. But yeah. I don't think that those people would ever ha run into this. No. We're all newbies on this bus. <laughs> yeah. All right. yep. Thank you, Microsoft. Um, all right, let's take a break. Come back. Lots more to talk about than just, you know, this silly. But it actually took like 45 minutes. I was, I told Mary Jo we we're going to get through this in like seven or I know. Or 10 He's minutes. like, we're going to get through this in 10 minutes. I'm like, no, <laughs> <we're> not. <laughs> not with those flow charts. No, no. Uh, As I said to her before the show started, 
Do you ever get sick of being right all the time? <laughs> Mary Jo. I do see. I, and I said, I haven't had enough practice at that to comment. <laughs> ah, ooh. <laughs> Hey, I do want to talk <laughs> about this crazy Samsung story and a lot more coming up. Oh, yeah, up. we should yeah. talk about that. Crazy. Yeah, that was... Crazy. Did I say crazy <laughs> enough? Crazy. Cray-cray. <laughs> but first, let's talk about something you're going to love, Blue Apron. In fact, I know you guys do love Blue Apron. Yeah. It is... Uh, they send you... I guess, how can I describe this in a nutshell? It, it's, it's as if... Somebody went to the store and shopped for you, brought all the best, freshest produce home, and then said, here's how you prepare an amazing meal. It's incredible. It comes to your door. Delicious ingredients, fresh, never frozen. Step-by-step -step instructions on a beautiful uh, uh, eight, eight and a half by 11 uh, heavy card stock coated card. So you, it, suitable for saving or framing for that matter. So you know, I mean, it's great. You get home from work, it's 5 o'clock. In half an hour, you've got a gourmet meal ready to go. They have personal plans that include two meals, and they have family plans, too, with kid-friendly ingredients. And you, it saves you wasted ingredients because it's always just the right amount. And it never assumes you have anything. It's so cool. A little bunch of parsley, that kind of thing. Um, each meal is uh, is healthy and balanced, about five to seven hundred calories per serving, and by the way, delicious. I mean that goes without saying. That you'll you have this. These are so good. My mouth is watering thinking about them. Like grilled brie sandwiches with quick strawberry jam and red walnut arugula salad. That'd be great for you, Mary Jo. Or <laughs> lamb and risotto style ditalini pasta with spring onion and green beans. And the thing is, if you looked at that, you said, well, I could never cook that. But you can because they give you everything you need and they walk you through it. There's even videos on the site. The recipes are on the site if you want to look at their recipes. And you can use those for free. You'll cook incredible meals, great for date night. And you'll be blown away by the quality and the freshness. Blue Apron. Fun for uh, cooking with friends, too. It's just, I mean, I could. there's so many great things about this. Let's, uh, let's give you two meals free so you can find out for yourself. Go to Blue Apron dot com slash twit this is a hard sh uh, ad for me to do because my mouth is always watering throughout the ad i want this all right blueapron.com slash twit two free meals just for going to blueapron.com slash twit uh I, this is the best idea whoever invented this i i shake your hand it is brilliant it is fun and you're gonna love it and we thank him so much for supporting windows weekly and uh, i hope have you we sent you more boxes you guys i hope so no. Um, uh, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> no. Not uh, yet. As a matter of fact, no. <laughs> oh, will, my kids uh, are starving. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I will try to get another one sent out to you. Blueapron.com slash twit. <clears throat> hey, by the way, yeah. when you started that ad, I looked at my email, and I got an email from someone that said, if you go to twit.tv slash shows, uh, uh -huh. Windows Weekly isn't there. Well, that would be a uh, mistake. And it isn't. What? Yeah. Huh? Well, what are you trying to tell us? Uh, you've been kidding. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, it is. There it is right there at the bottom there. Yeah. Oh, you know, if you just go to twit.tv slash shows, what do you get? What's what I'm saying? Oh, you get no filters. That So that gives you every damn show there is ever. Well, not everyone because Windows Weekly is not It there. stops it. Oh, you know, it's not paginating. That's why. Oh. All right, I will. I'll file a bug. Yeah. So normally, if you click the shows link, you get a filter, which is the active shows only. So you can see this filter is active, uh, yeah. and it doesn't. It do, it reaches the end of the page before it runs out of space. You can change these filters. Just just say, I just want to see retired. That'll also work without running out of space. But if you do both, right, then it doesn't. And you know what? Because they, you know. Web designers don't assume that you're going to just go to a link or something, so that's what happened. I will. Oh, that's easy to fix. They need to paginate it or just make it make room for more. But I also re recommend that we display these in reverse al alphabetical order. <laughs> I know you kind of get screwed by that. If most people are going to click the shows link, and of course you're right there at the no, bottom. We, you know, we thought about should we do this out of order, and uh, but I think if it's in alphabetical order, it's just easier. No, to I find. mean honestly, that would be terrible. I, I think <laughs> well, we used to do it that way. We put like your your show would be one of the top shows, so it'd be in the top five. But um, I mean, I think a special place at the top for the top shows would be great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or we could change it to a Windows Weekly. 
We oh, also we we're going to add. Uh, <laughs> we're going to make. So right now, the way it works. And remember, this is this is also uh, a site that's designed for small screens as well as large. So we didn't want to have this grid of recent shows be too long. Sure. Uh, but people are complaining. Well, I only see you know three latest shows. Uh, I'm intrigued these... by the show called OS2 Today. Oh no, wait, that's not iOS right. Today. <laughs> <laughs> um, OS2 today would be a great show, though. Um, but what we're going to do is, uh, I think, is make these links up here um, actual links. So you could click this, and you'd get another. A hit. We actually have this page, but it's hidden. twittv slash episodes which shows chronologically yes. episodes yes. as yeah. they've been posted, and it goes yeah. forever. So you could go back in time and see all the shows ever. Oh, that's uh, good. Bouncy, bouncy, what's going on there? Oh, there it is, okay. It's a nice Pong screen. You know what that is? It's funny. Um, this site is heavily cached, right? We do, do a lot of caching. But mm -hmm. nobody's ever been to this screen. So I, I populated the cache. <laughs> That's great. That yeah, was yeah, the yeah. first time. Now if I go back to that page, it'll it'll pop up because it's in it's now in the reddish, ca reddish cache. Or maybe it's because it's building this uniquely. It might be. Build yeah, it probably is. It's probably not cached. Because it has to be uh, fresh. Now, see now how fast that was. So, mm -hmm. anyway, yes. Thank you for the bug report. That's an that's an error, and it happens when you give you all the shows. Yeah, we yeah, run out of space. So it's just missing like a page two link or something. Yeah, we have to paginate it. Either that or increase the total number of shows. I don't. I think the the great developers at Four Kitchens were a little stunned when we said there were there were eleven thousand episodes. Of shows, oh, wow. total. Wow. Total. We've been doing this a while, That's and, <laughs> and it was like, wow. So I think yeah. they don't. They we just have to. I will. I will follow. I will follow. We're, you got to be closing in. It must be like ten years next year. Is that it is more than ten at? years now? We celebrate oh, our tenth anniversary now. in April. Okay. Yeah. April. Yeah. I remember when you called me. I was heading off to my first home swap. So I think this is our tenth one coming. Isn't that amazing? Something like that. Yeah, yeah, we've been doing this show. This is episode what five four hundred nineteen. So, yeah, eight years we've been doing this show. A little more than eight, eight years. years yeah. Pretty amazing. Uh, moving along, what do you want to talk about next? There is there's an SDK for Windows Ten, right? Mm, there is. Yes, is that important? Yes, it came out in April, the first release of it uh, at Build. And at that time, Microsoft said, you know what? We're going to be releasing updates to the Windows 10 SDK through the Insiders program. And they haven't since then. I mean, it hasn't been that long, but they haven't. But they, they, they did a new blog post this week that said, you know what? We are going to start doing that. And it's going to be this month, which means six more days, sometime in the next six days. There should be an SDK available to Windows Insiders. And it's going to be mostly timed to coincide with the Windows 10 builds, the preview builds going forward. So they're going to keep updating it, um, even after RTM, I would assume. Uh, and so if you're somebody developing apps, you probably will want to get a jump start on that. I, we already know the existing apps will mostly all work on Windows 10 if you've built store apps already. But if you want to tune those apps or guarantee that they're going to work on Windows 10, you definitely are going to want to get these SDKs and the tools as they become available to make sure. So, yeah. One more thing for insiders. Uno mas. <clears throat> the, the little uh, thing that's neat about this potentially, although this is going to become less of an issue moving forward, is that they're going to include emulated builds with it of both mobile and desktop. And that's something we haven't really right. seen with mobile in particular. And so it's possible, it, let's say they release a new build of Windows 10 this week, they release a new version of the SDK, we could get a version of the of Windows 10 Mobile in the emulator that's newer than what we have on our phones, and that would be kind of interesting because obviously there'll be new features in there and, and so forth. So um, I'm surprised they weren't doing this all along. I was when they yeah. announced this, I sort of assumed they were updating the SDK as they went, but I guess they hadn't been. Yeah. Hmm. At least not publicly, they haven't. the other The other thing they talked yeah. about were remember when we came to the studio at Build. Uh, we talked about those bridges that they announced at Build. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of those bridges, the one that's called Project Westminster, which is the one where you can take a website and package it and turn it into an app. The, a lot of the documentation is now available on that. They call them hosted apps. And there's a link in, in the blog post about this where you can go and start looking at the documentation and 
if you have a website you want to turn into an app, start getting that ready for Windows 10 now. The other bridges, we don't yet have anything public. They've been taking some private testers who want to do the Android bridge and the iOS bridge, but right now that information is still not public. Incidentally, I, I uh, just received a note from our developers at Four Kitchens. They fixed that shows bug. It's in the dev, oh, wow. really? it's in the dev pipeline, <laughs> and it'll be pushed up that to production take, huh? soon. <laughs> They're really good. They're really amazing. They're doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes. Well, I'm still mad, Leo, so. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, we can change that sort order. I can do that, but I, I decided no, 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 to do it alphabetically just because I'm... Uh, good. SDK is always good, especially... Uh, for those people writing fabulous new Twit apps for Windows 10. <laughs> Love hearing that. Yep. Uh, and, Come on, people. <laughs> and, and when you say it aligns with the mobile, it, that, uh, that doesn't the, mean it's the a, insider. Yeah, that doesn't mean it's the same as mobile. It's not like one SDK to rule them all. Or is well, it? Actually, it is, it actually for is. I mean, so in other words, the emulator will include both the desktop and oh, mobile nice. versions of Windows 10. Uh, mobile has been trailing behind the desktop version to date, although it's actually caught up a bit in the last release. Um, so this, you know, that can be potentially be kind of a big deal if you're interested in what's happening with mobile. And there were seven or eight of us that are, so. <laughs> <laughs> One or two people, right? Yeah. Yeah, and, and people have been asking about Visual Studio 2015 also because the these SDK and developer tools align with that. And right now that's in release candidate stage. It's almost done. It's in the final preview stage right. so we think visual studio 2015 final is going to be out right around july 29th uh the blog post made that seem like it would be the case but right. when i asked microsoft if, if it did mean that they said uh we aren't reading that that way actually what they said was <laughs> well if you have a genuine version of windows 7 <laughs> yeah <laughs> so we don't know exactly when Visual Studio 2015 is going to sure. hit GA, but I would guess either right before July 29th or on July 29th, right around there. Speaking of which, you may recall that when Microsoft originally announced the Office mobile apps for Windows 10, or Universal apps, whatever they're calling them this week, that they promised <laughs> to release them at the same time as Windows 10. And they haven't talked about that in a while, but oh, really? I assume I they came they're coming. No? no? You think it's later? I'm not talking about Office 2016. I'm talking about the mobile I apps. I thought the mobile also in the fall. Okay. But well, you can run the preview versions of those. Yes, that's true. Okay, then, sure. Right? Yeah. All right. Well, hopefully we'll get at least an update before Fine. then. Yeah. Hopeful. Hope springs eternal. <laughs> right. Um, and Windows 10 no longer relies on your MSA. Is MSA your Microsoft account, by the way? Yes. Okay. I, that, that's you know, that's one thing I didn't like about that blog post and gay ball. <laughs> yeah, they just launched right into acronym. Yeah, you know? and it's not. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I kind of figured out that what it was what it is. I, but you don't I know. Only for recently sure. saw the acronym MSA. I mean, within, yeah. the, within this year, calendar year, I don't yeah. remember when it was exactly, but I remember not understanding. What is this? Here's a tip, and guys. I, I, I had never heard anyone refer to that as MSA. <laughs> if you're doing communications with the outside world, Marcom, you know, sure. use words the outside world. You know, is pretty understand. sure they understand. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know it's a tweet and everything, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's priceless. <sighs> what that means, by the way, is that in Windows 8, you could actually get around using a Microsoft account. You could sign in with a local account. Obviously, you can sign in with a domain account and connect a right. Microsoft account if you want to. But to to use a lot of the apps and experiences in Windows 10, uh, Windows 8 rather. You had to either connect your Microsoft account or just sign in with your Microsoft account. Right. I mean, there was just no way around it. And, right. um, you know, for example, the, the, the example I used in my uh, article about this was the Mail app, uh, which is connected to Calendar and, and People uh, in Windows 8. And so if you wanted to, I, I use Gmail and I want to use Gmail in the Mail app that comes in Windows and you go to run it, it makes you sign into a Microsoft account first, even if you don't want to use it. it. There's no way around it. If you say no, the Mail app closes, you're done. In Windows 10, you can just sign in with your Gmail account. You don't have to use a Microsoft account, and uh, you don't have to sign in. You don't have to sign into the system with a Microsoft account. Obviously, there are certain things that require a Microsoft account. If you're going to buy apps from the store, if you're going to buy anything from the store, uh, which, by the way, I think is one of the reasons they moved purchasing music and movies and TV shows out of those apps and into the store, is because there would be this one place where you had to sign in. But if you wanted to use the uh, um, movies and TV show app, which is now the, what the video app is called, 
or if you wanted to use the, uh, the music app, you don't have to sign in. Just, you can just use it. And, uh, of course, you won't see nice your change. music unless you sign in. That's the reason. I mean, yes, that's but I mean, for, for but there's a big audience of people. Remember, they're trying to attract Windows Seven users. Windows Seven didn't have a Microsoft account sign in. They actually did have a a very low level way to connect your account to a Microsoft account, although very few people knew about that. But you couldn't sign in with a Microsoft account. And so I think what they're really doing is meeting the expectations of that enormous user base, which is, I just want to run these apps. I don't want to sign into anything. And uh, they're going to allow that for a lot of it. And I think that's a, that's a really nice change for those people. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Although, you, yeah. I mean, I agree. It was, it was a little... Uh, it was a little disconcerting when they first started doing that. It's like, well, I, I don't know. Well, I, like everything else in Windows 8, I mean, there are people who uh, understand what it's there for and appreciate yeah. the stuff you get with it. Because there is some neat stuff. You get yeah. uh, settings sync across PCs. Right. Um, I love that. And, I, and it's like a single sign-on kind of thing. Yeah. So you run the music app and your collection just appears. Right. So you, you know, you go into the news app and your all your favorite topics are all there, that kind of stuff. And that that's wonderful if you want it and it's there. And I, I do personally want it. I like that stuff. But... You know, there are a lot of people who are still, eh, the cloud might be a, a temporary condition. I'm not sure if I want to jump in, in, in that right now. So um, I, I just like that they're respecting the fact that different people want different things. I could while away the hours. Did you know that uh, Office for Android Phone is here? <laughs> Did you see That's that? That's my software I, pick. Okay. I heard that. I won't say nothing. Zip no. it. Zip um, Surface 3 is getting a firmware update, I hear. I hear it. Oh, wait, I... don't you want to talk about Samsung oh, Of course, I forgot. No, oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, Samsung. What, a, what a boneheaded move that was. <laughs> Would you explain? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, did you write actually, this one, Paul? Because I didn't write I, this. I, I, I just did. linked and, this. And actually, I have a little bit of background on this that I think is relevant. Because I, you know, HP earlier this year released uh, an, an Envy uh, X... 360 system that bypasses this problem that Samsung was having. And the way it does it is they work with Microsoft to ensure that the Windows updates that are delivered to that device are specific to that device and are not just generic drivers. And the reason they want to do that is because what HP found and what other what Samsung has found, the cause of this, is that, you know, just because companies like Intel or the, uh, the video card maker or the hard drive maker or whatever uh, release updated drivers doesn't mean that those drivers are better for that particular system. There's kind of a holistic thing going on in the system with a bunch of different drivers and hybrid devices, and sometimes different combinations of things work better on that particular system. So uh, they work with Microsoft, and they ensure that that is what happens. You only get the, the drivers that HP says are the best drivers for that machine. You don't get generic drivers, even if they're newer. So Samsung had the same problem. And what they decided to do was write a program. They, so I should say Samsung, like a lot of uh, PC makers, Lenovo does this, uh, Samsung does it. They have an application, in their case, it's called SW Update, that, you know, downloads specific updates for uh, Samsung devices, you know, Samsung applications and utilities and drivers and other things. And uh, a lot of PC makers do that. But they, <laughs> they released a uh, an update that disables Windows Update. And so you only get driver updates now and any updates through the software update application instead of through Windows. And there are interesting implications to that, but one is that's that's malware. I mean, you, you, they're disabling the system that users use to keep their system secure. Um, really, really dumb. The thing that I happen to know about, because I actually talked to Gabe all about this, is that that system that HP is using, it, they, they opened that up to all PC makers. And I don't know if this has changed, but at the time, a couple months ago, HP was the only one that had really bid in on it. They were like, yeah, we really want to do this. We want to make sure that the same care is taken with these systems down the road as we give to them when we make them, right? Because they ship them in this state that is highly optimized and they don't want Windows Update or anything else to screw it up. And uh, Samsung decided to go the other route, which was, you know, kind of the nuclear option. We'll just turn off Windows Update. Um, so to my knowledge, Samsung has not responded to this publicly. Um, I think it's fair to say Samsung doesn't necessarily have the same uh, overly positive relationship with Microsoft, say that HP or Lenovo might. Um, but I, I would imagine this will probably, you know, go away. Because <laughs> this is such a clear <laughs> bad idea. Yeah. So, so. Let's hope, right? I mean... 
It's so clearly malicious. I mean, it's just so dumb. Is it malicious? Is that what it is? Or just dumb? I mean, the, they wanted their updates. Uh, they, right? they were worried about driver it's, conflicts, yeah. so they decided to disable what they should. Right. I mean, that's not how to do it, but they decided to disable yeah. Windows Update. The problem is it doesn't just disable uh, Secretly disabling Windows Update. It's not, is not a good, probably not a good thing to right. do. It, it's yeah. not smart. Yeah. Somebody keeps saying, and I'll, I guess uh, because they're so persistent and I don't want to see it anymore, Muchacho says, what happens to your Windows 7 key if you take the upgrade? <laughs> right, 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 right. Well, um, actually, that's not that hard to answer. If you bought a computer that had Windows 7 on it, that key is sunk. You can't use it again. You could install Windows 7 again on that computer. If you bought a retail copy of Windows 7 and you have, then you have the licensing ability to migrate that key to a new machine, you could install it on a different computer. Um, that's it. I think that's, that's the only way to answer it. Yeah. Enough said. Not, yeah. There you go, muchacho. Direct. <laughs> depends, it depends on how you got it. Personal answer yeah. from the man himself. <laughs> it depends. Depends. <laughs> so you mean me? Yeah, you. You're the man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we're waiting to hear what Samsung says. You know these yeah. OEMs. I could see why Microsoft finally said we're making surfaces. You guys, no between Lenovo's <laughs> Superfish, I know. I know. Samsung's yeah. oh, Windows updates uh, bad. I idea. tell you, a friend of mine from Microsoft. This is years ago. I think, it, in fact, I think at the time Dell was the biggest PC maker in the world. But he was talking about the relations they had with Dell and I, just how much they hated each other. And he said, hmm. you know, it's really interesting. He's like, Microsoft and Dell really deserve each other. Uh. <laughs> you know, they just <laughs> it, it, it's it's such a double edged sword. This yeah. kind of partnership because. PC makers, of course, are what made Windows in many ways so successful. Right. But they're also what, what is screwing up Windows every single day of the week yeah. when they put out these yeah. machines with crapware. And It's uh, so it, funny because I remember talking to Andy bizarre. Grove back when he was uh, Intel CEO. And it was the yep. exact same thing between Intel and Microsoft. They needed each other desperately, Wintel. But at the sure. same time, Andy said, oh, man, I wish they'd just keep their software up with our hardware. They're still 32-bit. <laughs> we're making 64. Remember Intel in the 1990s was going to get into software, and they were going to write multimedia yeah. libraries for I Windows. Yeah. Where at the time when Windows, uh, Microsoft was making WinG, which, you know, turned into DirectX. And, man, they went, Microsoft went nuclear on them, you know. You guys make hardware. We make software. That's the way you know, it is. Yeah, Spain you don't, you don't and start Portugal, putting middleware baby. on Windows. <laughs> Oh, also, now, uh, can we talk, talk about, about uh, let's do HoloLens. Yeah, yeah. we got to talk about this. HoloLens. Yeah, we got to talk about this. You because we, we've talked about it on the show, excuse me, a few times. <clears throat> and we said maybe there was still a chance that the field of view of the HoloLens would be expanded. Because when Paul and I saw it in January, it had a, a fairly sizable field of view when we had it. I, yeah. I mean, I don't know how big that was, but like the size of a small box of business envelopes. <laughs> let's say. Okay. Okay. Like that. <laughs> Okay. Now it's a mail it was slot. Yeah, it was, no, it was good. It was <laughs> right. Big. So we weren't sure if Microsoft yeah. was going to be able to Let change that. Let me emulate that it for you now. This is what it looks now. like. Yeah, it's just like yeah, a peephole. Here. You're looking through a, yeah. you know what you're doing? <laughs> you're walking up to the front door and you're looking through somebody's mail slot. That's what yeah, you're seeing. exactly. Well, yeah. now we know because um, Kudo Sonoda, who works on HoloLens with Alex Kipman, did a video uh, appearance on Giant Bomb, whatever Giant Bomb is, but it was a video <laughs> where he, it's a very he was popular, asked. Uh, video game I don't know what it is, guys. Jeff Gerstman, guys. Uh, our close Sorry. personal friend. <laughs> it's a what? It's a big, big gaming site. Uh, okay, let me big say, let me say out of by the way, way out of Petaluma. How California. dare you, Mary? Jo. How dare Sorry, you? Sorry, guys. <laughs> giant Bomb is never great. heard of it till this interview. <laughs> but you go. He, now you know. Sonoda went on Giant Bomb and was asked explicitly what's going to happen with the field of view his exact quote is i think you're never going to get the full peripheral field of view but certain hardware we have the field of view it's not exactly final but it's not going to be hugely different from what it is now either right. so yeah mail slot that's it that's how it's going to be there is a, um, a weird segment of the population out there because i deal with them on twitter unfortunately they really want this thing to be great you know and they want to yep. believe that it's going to change. And they keep pointing out to me that this thing isn't final and that we, you should not be basing a decision or an opinion on some, you know, whatever. And it's like, guys, I, I want to believe. I, I get it. Um, but when the guy who's just, working on the thing says it's not going to yeah. be hugely different from what it is right now, 
Okay, we have to. I, go I think with him. when they switched to something that was basically the final hardware, that should have been the heads up, and it was for me. But it should have been for everybody that, you know, uh, this is what it's going to look like. I mean, it's too bad. Yeah, so that'll be version one, and yeah, uh, you know, a, a couple people have said to me when when this video came out, they said, you know, do you think this is another example of Microsoft being too early again, like they were with Connect, like they were with Spot? Right. And why didn't they just wait, even though they want to get this thing out there and in the right. Windows like 10 what's, time frame? What's the rush? You know, no one right. has why a, not do it a, next year? How about an next augmented year? reality solution in the pipeline that we right. know about. And they're already doing par partnership with Oculus, right? They're doing a partnership with Valve. So it's not like they're not going to be in. I know augmented reality is not virtual reality, but they're, they're going to have some things available in this space, this overall yeah. space. I think they should wait. I really think they should. I, I would take it a step a further. You know, uh, the, the one thing that, well, not the one thing, but one of the things they're very proud about with HoloLens is that it's fully untethered. It's a battery pack, right. uh, you know, battery-based uh, wireless device. Yep. Uh, why? Uh, you're not going to, you're not going to walk out the door and walk up the street with the thing on. It's not Google Glasses. <laughs> you're literally going to be using it in a room always. Why Although, can't do you it remember? Be no, do you remember the video we saw back in January when they first showed HoloLens showed a woman walking around outside wearing it? Sure. Oh, sure. That's not going to yep. happen. Not going to happen. I mean, she was working I mean, like happen, at a... But that woman will probably end up in a, like a mental <laughs> No, it was like she was in a showroom. <laughs> a car showroom or a motorcycle ah! showroom. <laughs> the world's uh, on there's fire. There's a crazy homeless person walking around not, with what appears to be a Not on the New York helmet. subway, let's hope. But, <laughs> but still, yeah, I agree. Maybe, maybe that is the first way you you debut it. Is okay if that's yeah. what you need for the bigger field of view. It's I, tethered. I, you could. There's so many directions you could go with this. You could have a um, the version they have in like kind of a pro or bigger version. It has a a more yeah. immersive kind of um, yeah. helmet. Whatever. Remember, there's um, a, there is a device on the market now that looks like that, right? It has this. I forget the name of that. You when you you, uh, you, moved, you just moved your hands and it looked like someone was about to poke you in the head, but then I realized it was you. <laughs> <laughs> it was mine. I was no, like Leo uh, was reaching through the internet. <laughs> Paul, you tweeted this a long time ago. Mm -hmm. It was it was some industrial type equivalent of the Hololens, and it had a full yes yeah. mask. It looked like a almost? welder's mask kind of right. thing. Right. It looks like yeah. a welder's mask. Yeah. Yep. Why not that? I don't remember the name of it, but yeah, that, right. Exactly. I, I think yeah. there's a, the type of people that would be kind of hardcore about this thing, which frankly right now is just about anyone who would be interested in this thing, I think would want that wider view. And most of them would want yeah. or would be perfectly okay with a bigger headset. I mean, why, you know, why not this big glass thing right. that gives you more of a, yeah. uh, yeah. a field of view? Why not? Why not? But now I'm sure we it's at expense least, you know. related. It, it, it's a processor yeah. related, That's battery related. It's, it's much kind of processor. And yeah, you, yeah. I mean, they made an interesting choice to put the PC in the headset. Which really, I think, affects everything. I mean, I think that's an unusual. Yeah, it, it's they've decided to take this thing that could be Tether. more of a traditional kind of PC yeah. sort of thing. And they turned it into like their first Mac. It's just like yeah. a sealed unit. Yeah. And uh, that's, that means it's really not going to be upgradable from a hardware perspective, probably. Uh, at least in any meaningful way. And... There's no doubt this stuff is going to get better, but it's going to leave behind those mm -hmm. people who did adopt the first version. Or because there is a first version out in the world, it will um, make it more difficult to advance the software because that first device won't be able to handle it yeah. you know, or handle big advances or whatever. Anyway, here it comes, yeah. folks. So get ready. <laughs> Enjoy. Uh, do you we, know, it, I it will be this we'll year, right? It. It, it, they said well, this year, but... Did they ever say this? Year? They said within the Windows 10 time frame, which could mean. Well, it's forever, a, right? Because now we're just pretty Windows much. 10 forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so sometime between now and when the earth implodes into the sun, uh, we will release HoloLens. It might be this holiday. I, I'm kind of thinking it won't be, but I, I don't know. Well, I mean, Surface Hub is coming out a lot more quickly than I sort of thought it would for some reason. Um, but they're also, they've been working possible. on that for a couple of years also, yeah. sourcing mm -hmm. it and building it, right? And. I don't know how long they've been getting the components they needed for the HoloLens headsets assembled. Right. A little more rare. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Surface 3 firmware update. You want to talk about that now? Yeah. yeah I mean, this, the Surface 3 stuff is notable just because this is the first time we've seen a, a Surface 3 set of updates. And there's a bunch of them, actually. 
uh, which is not all that surprising. Tip, the typical, if you were to look at the firmware updates month by month for any Surface device, I'm sure it starts up high and kind of, you know, doesn't go linearly, but goes down over time. So a bunch of stuff there, and that's cool. But uh, Surface Pro 3 also got a firmware update, and there's a fewer updates, but one of them adds support <laughs> very vaguely for new features in Windows 10, and that's kind of interesting. And so they're, they're obviously getting that machine ready uh, for the public upgrade to Windows 10, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. But, and I then mean, the I band got, got a firmware update also, although they're not saying what's in that except... General fixes, fixes or something, updates. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they they just announced uh, the golf update, and I wonder oh, right. if that yeah. is not prepping it for that, uh, mm. because I don't believe the golf update uh, came as part of it, but maybe that was a, a prerequisite. But yeah, I, actually, by the way, this morning, I you know I go for a walk every morning, and I'm uh, <laughs> laden down with technology like the idiot that I am. But I uh, I went to I was going to do something you know with the band and. I got the update and I had to sit there and wait for this thing to update. So I'm sitting on my kitchen table. My wife walks by. She said, I thought you were walking. What do you do every morning? Come down here and sit at the table and pretend you're walking. <laughs> you <know>? Oh, <laughs> well, you no, busted. I, uh, busted. I, I, my, my Microsoft band has to update. And, you know, she just like shakes her head and walks away. It's just, it's, I can't it walk with an out of date band. Don't you I'm understand? not going to walk and not have it be tracked, Leo. It's like I never walked. I What's know? the point? It doesn't count. No calories uh, involved. <laughs> yep. Yeah. What's the point of walking without the band? <laughs> no, I've done that myself. I know. I I'm with you. I understand, Paul. <laughs> Been there, done that. It's all about the achievements. I like my my wrist vibrates, and it says, "Hey, you've you've completed some goal for the day," and it's like eight o'clock in the morning. You know, it's nice. It's nice. Of course, then I don't move for the rest of the day. But. <laughs> oh, we have the name of the headset we were talking about. Yes. Dacri, D A Q R I. Oh, is like the one a daiquiri. That... Oh, this is the uh, augmented reality headset. Josh, Josh Jacob um, just sent the, the link to me for okay. that. And it's a smart helmet. That's, that's a smart weird. helmet. And therein <laughs> lies the problem. Smart yeah, helmet, the like character helmet. from, uh, from yeah. Spaceballs. That guy. But you know what? It's, it, it's made for work. This thing is made to use in industrial settings. That's what this is yeah. for. Yeah. Right. But. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying HoloLens is made for industrial settings per se, no. but it is basically made to be in a room. I mean, you're going to use it yeah. in an office, in a mm -hmm. a lab or whatever. I mean, I yeah, seems like that's the way it should be. Yeah. Um, you talked about Surface Three firmware updates. I'm trying to I'm trying to remember. Yeah, we got sidetracked with, with the HoloLens there. Yeah, and, the, uh, and the and the wristband. Okay, <laughs> the uh, seven thirty five is now on Verizon. And uh, are you going to replace your icon, Mary Jo? No. See, I think Although, that it, the, you have the nine thirty five, so that's two hundred less. Yeah, I have the what's a, what's the icon nine twenty nine. Nine twenty nine. Okay. This is the. Um, so you got the red one. Nice. I got the red one. Yeah. Check it out, Verizon. It's exclusive red. to Verizon. Yep. Um. This device has been out for a while in other countries, right? I forget, months, six months? Since last October. Yeah, but now we have it on Verizon. So this is my loaner device. And I got to tell you, the thing I love about it is how light this thing is and thin yeah. compared to the icon. Man, it's really light. It's got a plastic back. That's why. Um, well, by the way, when they showed that to me, I, saw, I first saw this thing last October. And when he handed it to me, it was, it's like a balloon, you know, kind of raises it is. up. And, like, I, 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 and I actually said to him, well, I said, this is clearly an engineering sample. I mean, do you have one that works? And he says, no, that's yeah. the phone. Because what it looks like is the yep. 920, which was a big, heavy, dense, you know, brick. And this thing nice is, sense. yeah, beautiful and light. And, yep, really nice. But it feels nice in your hand, doesn't it? It's like a nice, it does. it's nice to hold it. I don't even think I would put a case on this because it feels like it wouldn't slip out of my hand. The icon is very slippery. And I am yes. always scared I'm going to drop that thing. Uh, the downside, no dedicated camera button. Wow. Yeah. I really miss that now. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then also uh, the, the uh, what do you call those three things at the bottom? Those three buttons, the home button, the search button, and the back button. Yeah, the navigation bar. Those navigational buttons are, are not on the bezel, right? They're actually yeah, they're on in software. The, so they're there are software. pros and cons to that, by the way. I mean, with yeah. the software-based navigation, you can actually hide that if you want to. Yeah, that's true. Uh, you can but swipe I keep up inadvertently it. bumping them and like losing. Yeah, them. and then it gives you a little and turning warning. Them back. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
But otherwise, I really like this phone so far. And the battery life the, on this the is The camera awesome. is spectacular. In fact, I, for, for a, I think what I, I think is like a 6.7 megapixel or whatever it is, um, I, on that same walk today, because everything revolves around my walk this morning, um, I took a picture of some of the flowers in our yard, and I took one with a 1520, which is the phone I normally use, and, and also with the uh, um, 735, because, you know, I can't carry too many phones. And um, honestly... It just is a, I mean, you could zoom in and see the difference a little bit, but the 735 takes fantastic photos for what that camera is. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. I'll put them up today I, sometime. They're yeah, really I haven't nice. had luck with it. Um, I think just because you, there are a lot of options and settings and I haven't got those all set well yet. So okay. I'm not loving it as much as my icon camera, but it's not yeah. bad. It still takes an okay beer picture. That's, that's my criteria. <laughs> that's the key. <laughs> I put a, pitch, a flower picture in the show notes, by the way. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, uh, cloud. Oh, yeah. Let's, cloud. let's do a little cloud. Let's talk some Azure, MJ. Let's talk some Azure. And let's talk some containers, mostly. Whew. All right. Let's, let's slow down a little here, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> so this week uh, has been the DockerCon show, which... You know, it's no it's no E3, but it's a big show if you're into containers and, and uh, container technology. So Microsoft was at that show. Mark Rosinovich himself was there doing some demos where he was showing um, apps going on multi-platform containers. You know, micro Microsoft's doing a lot of things with containers itself. It's building containers into the next versions, version of Windows Server, Windows Server 2016. Uh, it's got containers already for uh, Linux in Azure, and it's doing some things around building a container that runs on top of Hyper-V. Because, you know, a lot of people think hy hypervisors and containers are opposites, but Microsoft's actually melding those two technologies as well for the next version of Windows Server. Um, so Mark's been talking up containers a lot. He's been talking about the whole vision of microservices that Microsoft is adopting with Azure. In fact, if you if you remember, Azure has infrastructure as a service side where you run uh, virtual machines in, uh, with Windows Server on them or Linux on them. That's one way you can run your stuff in the in the Microsoft Cloud. But you also can run it in Microsoft's platform as a service technology, and that means you rewrite your app or you build an app from scratch that takes advantage of all the things that you get be, uh, inherently by being a cloud app. So not that many people have been doing Microsoft Platform as a service piece, but now they're changing it up, what they're doing there, and they're doing something called the Azure Service Fabric. And this is a whole new way of doing uh, the Platform as a Service part of Azure. Uh, and Mark Rosinovich has been talking about that as well, how in the future, and not too distant future, I bet, Microsoft's going to be supporting Linux in, the, in its platform as a service. It's going to be supporting containers there. It's, it's going to even let you write with Java, people. They're really uh, getting a whole new religion over there. I know. Shocking. Crazy, crazy talk. <laughs> yeah. So this week they, they were talking a lot about that. They were talking about Linux and Azure and containers and Java and Docker and how Microsoft's working with the Docker community. Contrib they're, they're, in fact, the biggest contributor to Docker, the Docker code base right now and have been for the past few months, which just when you hear that, you're like, wait, Microsoft? So, you know, Satya Nadella said he loves Linux and Microsoft is all in with the open source world these days. And now you kind of believe it. There you, oh, yeah, Microsoft's joining this new, um, even crazier, a new project that was announced this week called the Open Container Project, which is meant to bring standards. <laughs> now, we have an open container law here in California. <laughs> yes, everybody's like, oh, open container, you could do a fun <laughs> graphic with that one. <laughs> But no, yeah, this, this is, is a Linux stuff. foundation. Yeah. Linux foundation, guys. Remember when Microsoft hated these guys and they were always fighting? Now they're working with them on this open container project to create standards for containers. And it's not just them. It's Google in there. VMware is in there. Every, all the big companies are in there. CoreOS. It's just, it's a very different Microsoft. Yeah, that's days. great. No, Docker is amazing. And I'm, I'm glad they're jumping yep. on that. Hey, here's yep. Paul's picture. I just got the update. I know. Monday. Wow. That is, that I just is saw beautiful. That. Yeah, I can't yeah, believe you, you know, took it with that <clears throat> camera. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, when you when you zoom it in, I mean, I took a one with the fifteen twenty. The fifteen twenty, obviously, it's oh, this a bigger is the fifteen twenty. 
No, no, this is a 735. No. All right. Um, That's they're both, done. they look nice. When you zoom in, uh, there's more artifacting and, and blurring on the 735 version. But I, when I used the international version of this phone last fall, I was blown away by the camera and it, it's, I still have the same reaction. It's really, it's nice. It's really nice. Beautiful picture. Yes. All right, let's take yeah, a break. Back of the book coming up here. Yeah. Paul Therott, Mary Jo Foley. We're talking <laughs> Microsoft. Right now, though, I'd like to talk a little bit about making the best website you can easily, simply, affordably at Squarespace.com. Squarespace is the place for the best hosting, the best software. They, they tightly link to give you an amazing experience and to give your users, your viewers, your readers an amazing experience, whether it's a blog, a, a business site, a professional website, an online store, Squarespace makes it beautiful. Great templates for uh, musicians, too, uh, including CD sales or uh, down, digital download sales, including uh, concert dates and all of that. It's robust. It's reliable. It just never goes down. State-of-the-art technology. All their, all their sites are responsive, too, so it doesn't matter how your users come to your site. And nowadays, most people come by a mobile It'll look great on a tiny screen and on a big screen. It's great for a wedding site. You can get started right now. Just go to squarespace.com, click the Get Started button, and you've got two weeks free. E-commerce available on every single site, even the $8 basic trial plan. Uh, it, actually, if you start your trial before June 30th, and that means you've got only a few more days, you'll get a year of custom email and business tools when you sign up for either the professional or the business plan. Squarespace.com. These are the beautiful, by the way, the single page sites. They call them cover pages. Uh, this is really great if you've got, you know, a special release or, you know, something to talk about. Uh, this is part of your account as well. A single page website, and you can create it in minutes and just, and just really be doing everything you need. Boom, like that. I, it's just a mind blower. I think Squarespace is incredible, and I want you to try it right now. Squarespace.com. Use the promo code Windows when you buy. You'll get 10% off any plan. And you'll let them know you heard it on Windows Weekly, which ain't bad either. Squarespace.com. When you sign up for a year, you get the domain name as part of the deal, as part of the price, and the pricing is very affordable. And don't forget, sign up for the trial. Click the Get Started button before June 30th, and you'll get a free year of custom email and business tools on either the business or the professional plan when you do sign up and use that offer code Windows to get an additional 10% off. Squarespace, we love it. You will too. Build it beautiful. Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley, the beautiful people of the Windows Weekly team. <laughs> Let's start with Paul. Let's start with Paul well, Therott. The people anyway. They're people. It, Windows Weekly is made of people. Your tip of the week, my friend. No, I guess we actually covered this earlier in the show. I didn't well, know it, was, it, was a... it doesn't matter. It's still a good well, tip. Well, well, Leo. Reiterate. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, Microsoft has finally stepped back from the cliff, as I said earlier, with the Microsoft account. So if you avoided Windows 8 or 8.1 because of this requirement, uh, you might want to take another look at Windows 10. And uh, it, it they make it easier during the initial setup to not use a Microsoft account. They make it easier to use the system itself without an account. You can attach a Microsoft account to any app that either requires it, which is not very many, or would be better with it. So, for example, if you just want to use, you know, the MSN Weather app and get, you know, your favorite cities in there, you can sign in there and, and don't have to worry about the rest of the system. So I think that's really cool. And um, I've been... In the course of writing the book about Windows 10, of course, I've got, you know, Windows 8, I've got, or 8, when I should say, and Windows 7, and you kind of compare these things side by side, you know, how how do things change? And it's very interesting in Windows 10, uh, if from sort of a high level, if you look at a feature, it could be, you could pick anything. A lot of stuff may not seem like it has changed, either from, you know, Windows 7, if it dates back to there, or to Windows 8.1 or 8.0. And in fact, they've they've really changed almost everything in the system in, in small ways and almost always for the better. And uh, this was one that really stood out for me in the course of uh, kind of collecting all the different changes uh, between the OS versions. So that's kind of a cool one if you've been holding off. Yeah, it's interesting that they backed off on that a little bit. 
Yeah, yeah. I think there was a bunch of hardline stance stuff in Windows 8 that just didn't go yeah. over well with people, and yeah. they've kind of stepped yeah, back. Yeah. yeah, they were a little yeah. too purist. Yeah, mm -hmm. a little too much. Software so, pick of the week. Yeah, software pick. Uh, software pick rather. Um, Microsoft today uh, released the f not final, but the not first non preview versions of the Office apps for Android handsets. This is uh, Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Uh, Mary Jo actually had this, uh, I think, a couple hours before Microsoft announced it, <laughs> but uh, it, they're there now. And so if, if you use these apps during the preview, you might know that you had to go to Google Plus and get a special link, and that link got you into the store. Now these things are just broadly available. Anyone can get them in the store. Uh, if you did have the preview versions, you'll be updated automatically. Um, they work pretty much exactly like the equivalent iPhone apps do. And so as of today, what we basically see are shipping versions of these apps on Android, uh, handsets and tablets, on iPhones and on iPads. And then we still have uh, preview versions on Windows 10 and Windows 10 Mobile. And we were talking about that earlier, I would assume by the end of the year, certainly. Um, that should be finalized as well. And now we'll have that complete set of traditional Office apps on all of the big mobile platforms. Um, just semi-related to this um, a lot of, there's been a lot of confusion about this topic, not that it matters necessarily too much to, to us, but uh, Google just announced a free subscription service of a kind. I think a lot of people have misconstrued what that is. And what it really is is a free internet radio station or a set of radio stations. Um, so Google has a service called Google Music that works a lot like, say... Well, most online, you know, music services, you can put your own music into there. They allow it to 50,000 songs for free. So if you have a bunch of music, you can upload it. That's kind of nice. Uh, works a little bit like Amazon. They have a subscription service, which confusingly doesn't have a name. But if you want to pay nine ninety nine a month, you get access to the 30 million tracks they have in their store. Wait. You can add that stuff to your collection. I know. they it says, like, Call it Google it's, Music it's, Plus let's, or something. Call it Prince. Yeah. Something. Anything. <laughs> You know, the service formerly known as whatever. Um, I think they call it all access, don't they? I, okay. That's, that's uh, the uh, official That might name. be true. Yeah. That could be, okay. Um, that service is actually really nice. Um, it doesn't help us. If you're on Windows Phone, you're out of, you're out of luck. But if you're running uh, Android or iOS, works great. It works on the web as well. Um, and it works, you know, like Xbox Music does with Xbox Music Pass or... Uh, like Spotify does if you pay for Spotify, um, in that you get to add music from their collection into your private cloud collection. You can download it to devices, use it offline while you're paying for the subscription. Uh, you can mix and match your own music that you've bought, either uh, on CD or you know, otherwise uh, from other services. Uh, it it commingles all this stuff. It's really nice. Um, what this new thing is, is an ad-supported set of radio stations. And so this brings it into uh, brings Google Music into closer competition with Spotify. I would say. I think if, the timing is obvious. If uh, you ever use Songza, you'll know mm -hmm. what this is because this is it's Google Songza. bought Songza, and uh, they're basically making that available for free to everyone now. You you got but it before. It's, it's ad access. Yeah, it's ad yeah. support. So yeah, if you do pay for all access, uh, you get this service without ads, and so that's kind of nice. And so I, I think the way to compare this would be, we don't actually have this on the Microsoft side, right? So. When on uh, like a Nokia or a Lumia device of some kind, I would say that this thing, all of the Google Music services together are the equivalent of Xbox Music plus Xbox Music Pass plus uh, Mix Radio, which of course now is owned by a third party. Um, because the radio part of it, the part they just announced is, you know, it's radio. It's basically internet radio stations. And so this is the thing that was is a big deal on Spotify. It's the thing that was a big deal on Beats and will be a big deal on Apple Music. Um, and so this is them trying to keep up with the Joneses. And, you know, as I always do, I compare this thing to what Microsoft does, and I find Microsoft kind of lacking because they walked away from this. And uh, I think they had one of the best internet radio services in mixed radio, and they sold it, you know, which is too bad. Yeah, I mean, I think this is, and if you pay for Google uh, Music, it's... Yeah, it's, you get every, it's the whole thing. It's, it's nice, great. yeah. yeah I, I was a big on, Songza fan. Songza was focused okay. on, like, time of day and... Mood yeah, and moves so and forth. things. Yeah, and that's they, what Beats is like. That and um, yeah. Spotify has that kind of thing as well. Are you gonna do? Uh, uh, are you gonna look at Beats when or Apple Music when it comes out? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yep. This yeah, is, I think if I if I wasn't using Windows Phone, I don't know what I would use. I probably would use Google Music actually. I do. There's uh, some negatives to it. For instance, it's tied to your account. Um, yeah, I don't care about that. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean. Um, 
Well, that means I can't let Lisa listen to my music, right? Because she'd have oh, to I log into yeah, my yeah. Google yeah, account. Yeah, so um, which includes the Apple everything thing else, is, right? Apple has a family plan, which is very reasonable. I mm -hmm. think that's the one interesting thing that they're mm -hmm. doing. Apple does not have a free tier beyond like a 90-day trial. Um, they they allow so, uh, this uh, radio station. The radio stations are free at Apple. Uh, yeah, as they are today in iTunes Radio, right? right. It's kind yeah. of the same. Including kind of thing, that yeah. new Beats 1 uh, yep. Thing. So we'll see how that goes. It, it's hard to compare this stuff because it changes so much. I mean, even something like Xbox Music, which I think is very far behind these guys uh, in some ways, it changes. <laughs> you know, this year they've added uh, the ability to put songs into OneDrive, for example. I mean, that changes that service a lot. And also, by the way, uh, kind of conforms to that new Windows 10 way of doing things where it's a little less antagonistic to people that don't want to, you know, definitely buy into the way of doing things. So if you just want your own music, you can put it in OneDrive. It works fine in the app. So. Uh, it, it just depends on what you want, I guess. Yeah, but the Google one looks good to me. I like it. I uh, I've been using I've been a subscriber since uh, it began, and yeah. um, I like it a lot. There's some limitations. You can upload your entire collection to it, which is great. Right. Uh, Amazon does that, and you can do that with Xbox Music too, right? You upload your music. Uh, yeah, in in OneDrive, but it's be, you're beholden to your storage, right? So yeah, on so Google, you get fifty thousand right. songs for free. Amazon. I, I think you pay some minimal amount. I pay twenty five bucks. You get a right, few thousand for, the, for free, and then I pay. Or another. if you're a Prime, I think you just get it for free. No, I think I had to pay more. I'm a Prime. You yeah. Twenty five. It's not much if you did. It was right. twenty five bucks. Yeah, it was cheap. And for I, a year. Apple will do the same thing. Twenty five bucks a year, mm -hmm. you get iTunes Match. Yep. Uh, it will match your stuff to the cloud. So it just depends on what you're using. Uh, where, you, where, where are you listening to music? Yeah, and Google works with my Sonos. Uh, yep. Google works with a lot of the stuff that I uh, use. Works on my yeah. iPhone. Yeah, whereas Android. Xbox Music works with uh, nothing. <laughs> well, yeah, but if you're a Windows Phone user, you, know. you don't have Google Music. So, I guess you could use right. it on the um, web. Can you use it in the browser? Not from the phone. Yeah. Not from the phone. I'm hoping. I started. I looked at. Well, you saw my tweet. Maybe Mary Jo saw it yesterday. Uh, yeah, you know, this is what <laughs> Google Music looks like on Edge. Yeah, it's yeah. A, like a dull gray nothing. <laughs> it doesn't. So yeah. They're they're bad. working on it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mary Jo Foley, our Enterprise Pick of the Week. Yes. Our Enterprise Pick of the Week. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Advanced <laughs> Threat <laughs> Analytics. I detect a threat. Yes. <laughs> ATA. So this is one of those fun picks of the week that came because Microsoft accidentally published a blog post before it was ready. And the blog post said that Microsoft will be adding Advanced Threat Analytics to its Enterprise Mobility Suite. So right now, Enterprise Mobility Suite is three things. It's Azure Active Directory, Premium, Azure Rights Management, and Intune, the management service. Uh, this thing that's called Advanced Threat Analytics is based on this technology Microsoft bought late last year when they acquired an Israeli company called Aorto. And what, no, sorry, Aorato, A-O-R-A-T-O. And what that company did is uh, ha they had a product called the Organization Security Graph, which lets you look at who's accessing your on-premises Windows Server Azure uh, Active Directory. So you can see if there's any abnormalities, if people are sneaking in and hitting the Active Directory. So it's a, it's a security tool, and it's really interesting that Microsoft's going to add this to EMS. They're also going to add it to the product they have called ECS, the Enterprise Cloud Suite. And they also plan to make it available standalone for people who don't want to have it through either of those bundles. Um, it is going to cost you. They're going to raise the price of EMS if you want uh, advanced threat analytics included. And there's going to be some fee for having to get a client access license and, you know, all the lovely Microsoft licensing complexities that we talked about at the start of the show. But just know it's coming. I, I think it's probably coming within the next few weeks based on how the post was worded before Microsoft took it down. So there you have it. Advanced Threat Analytics. And Mary Jo has her very own Windows 10 rumor. I do. Yep. We've been talking about uh, the fact that we don't know when Windows 10 Enterprise was going to be available. We uh, Microsoft hasn't said, and there's been a lot of rumors. I've heard August 1st. I've heard September. I've heard October. I heard it was not going to be at the same time as the July 29th start of the consumer roulette. Well, if you go to technet.microsoft.com, there is a very interesting thing at the top of that page, which is the Windows Tech Center. It says, start planning today. Windows 10 Enterprise evaluation will be available on July 29th. 
And yes, it says the evaluation version, but usually what an evaluation version of an enterprise product is at, for Microsoft is a time bombed version of the real final code. So this makes me think maybe there's a chance that Windows 10 Enterprise could be available on July 29th or very shortly thereafter. I've asked Microsoft if they'll comment, and so far, no comment. Well, Par for the course. it's credible, though, right? <laughs> yeah, it's their site. I'm like, your site says it's going to be available on July 29th. <laughs> Would you it's like, like a credible comment? source, you confirm. <laughs> <laughs> Can you confirm yourself? <laughs> Can you confirm your own site? Yeah, no, but so far, no comment. <laughs> uh, let's have some beer. What do you say? I know. It makes me want to drink. <laughs> So I, you know, uh, when I do beer pick of the week, I try to pick beers that I think many people can get, at least here in the U.S., that are fairly widely accessible. But every once in a while, I have to dig deep and go for a cult beer. And this week, I'm doing that. I'm picking a beer from Hill Farmstead, which if you're a craft beer lover, you know, they're one of the most famous craft breweries in the United States, probably the world. They're based up in Vermont. They make a lot of different beers. Um, they make this series they call, I think, the Heritage Series, where it's named after their relatives. So the one I picked is Hill Farmstead Anna. It's a um, Saison or farmhouse style, and it's brewed with Vermont wildflower honey Ooh. and Vermont water. Ooh. And it's so smooth and delicious. It's not overly sweet. It just is one of those things you drink and you're like, wow, that beer deserves to be rated 100 or whatever it gets rated wow. on. So, but there's a little honey flavor though. Just a touch. Yeah. Um, it just kind of smooths it out. And when you drink it, you I, I always feel like I'm in Vermont when I drink this beer. And in the past <laughs> week, I've gotten to have it twice, um, which is crazy because it's really, really hard to get. But um, two friends have given me- I want it. Uh, samples. Yep. I love Saison's. Yeah, if you're ever in Vermont, it's, it's very limitedly for sale there at the brewery and at a couple of bars up there. And every <sighs> once in a while, people trade it or you see it in a bottle shop somewhere. But if you ever get to try a Hill Farmstead beer, you should try that. Hill Farmstead. And then this one, it's Anna. Yes. But you say anything from Hill Farmstead is good. Anything from them is good. Uh, um, but this one I really like. It's just really, really easy to drink, would pair with every kind of food and just smooth lovely uh, summer honey beer. beer never had a honey beer that's yeah not good. too honeyish though some honey yeah. beers all you taste is honey right. but this one is very balanced right. yeah. my friends we have come to the end of this fabulous show windows weekly how do we do it each and every week well it's a <laughs> it's absolutely thanks to these two here mary joe foley from allaboutmicrosoft.com paul therott from therott.com i tip my cup to you both <laughs> And uh, thank you for being here. We do Windows Weekly every Wednesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, 1800 UTC, twit.tv. If you can't watch live, you can always get on-demand shows after the fact. If you go to twit.tv slash WW, or you uh, subscribe in your favorite and podcast. We may someday even be on the show's uh, page. <laughs> it's, it, it's got any minute now. Someday. They, they, they literally, within, uh, I think, two minutes of the request, that pushed it to the dev server. That's and nice. uh, well, they've been doing some touch up. We got the handyman in, and they're doing, they're doing a little painting and stuff, uh, spackling some screws. So while they were there, they uh, they heard us and they responded. Nice. Um, and the uh, we we've got more than fifty requests to use the API to develop. Uh, oh wow! Little nice. tools. I think one of the tools oh. I want to do is like a download every episode button. Yeah, you know, <laughs> or something like unleash that. the hounds. Unleash the com. hounds button. <laughs> can any can any third party developer use your API? Because I've had people ask. Me. Absolutely. Uh, so you can read about it at Apiary if you Google Twit and Apiary, which is a, a API documentation uh, site. We've got our docs up there. Uh, make a three scale account if you don't already have one. ThreeScale .net. And then email api at twit.tv to request access. We will be granting access. It won't be, it's not open to this sense in the sense that anybody can just do it because we, right. we need to run it through 3Scale so we can um, uh, keep, 3Scale um, not only gives you uh, API keys, but also monitors API usage. So if there's a bad actor like pulling a thousand requests a second, we can cut them off and things like that. So, but at any, but we, and we haven't created a, a um, a use, you know, a kind of fair use uh, page yet, but at some point we'll figure that out. And I, at this point, I just want to let anybody who wants it to try it. 
I'm, and, I'm waiting for someone to make a mixtape that's just me and Mary Jo saying, I don't know, over and over again. <laughs> the API yeah, does not know. allow that. <laughs> we don't know. It's not in the we API. <laughs> you, could <laughs> the, <laughs> you could get the stuff, but uh, the, not from the API. Um, no, the, it's, really a, uh, it's really cool. It's very exciting. Um, we're really thrilled uh, to be doing it this way. It goes a little more expensive, but um, it gives us... Uh, we use the API, too. I mean, the website is a, is a consumer the API. It's not, it has no special access. It's just like anybody no else. No hidden APIs, Leo? There are hidden APIs. They're <laughs> private APIs, but those are for internal use for our editors. Like, so uh, what What other, what you don't see, the website is just at the tip of the iceberg. It's so your own apps run better than other apps. Is no. that what it is? Is that the business? No, apps would actually be equal. <laughs> but we have... You know have, why he's saying this, don't you? Yes, I do. <laughs> Microsoft's been accused of these yes. things for years. Yep. Spurious charges, all as if there were some <laughs> Windows <laughs> secrets somewhere. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, we do have a private API because, um, in addition to a website, we created a whole, the whole workflow goes through this. Mm -hmm. So we have our own um, editors have their own Drupal uh, pages that they use when they post a site. Everything goes through this. It's really cool. I'm 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 really kind of blown away. Uh, it's like a Ferrari. <laughs> so um, it's kind of like, but you, same thing for you guys. When you, pu but it's it's harder for us. When you publish a story, you publish it in the CMS, and yeah. it publishes mm -hmm. out to the website. For us, we're not we're publishing audio and video and right. yeah, you know, oh, yeah. and, and to a variety of places and all of that. And the sure. website has to accommodate all of that. And so, um, and the API does. So with the API, yeah, you have full access to all of that. You can read. It's a basically it's a read only API. Then we have a write API for our side. Uh, are we done? We're done. I believe we're done. I think we are. Yep. We'll see you next. I will not be here for three weeks. I'm headed out. Well, three uh, weeks. Three Just Wednesdays in a row. I well, think uh, Father yeah. Robert uh, okay. might do some shows. Maybe Mike. Yeah, Mike wanted to do some shows. He used to be the editor yes. of Windows Magazine. He feels mm -hmm. like he 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 still. I, I'm going to miss. I'm actually going to. I I think I'm missing two weeks. Are you? I just realized. Yeah. Don't wow. worry, guys. I'm bringing in the heavy hitters. Oh, Dr. Pizza. <laughs> okay, so Father Robert Balasser will be okay. hosting all Great. three Windows Weeklies for the next three weeks. I will be back on uh, July, I think that makes it July 21st or 22nd. Wow. Uh, 22nd. Well, and, I'll be there then, but then the next week I go to France. <laughs> wait a minute, you're going to Ireland <laughs> and France? Setters? I know, it's a weird Jesus. year. It's, it's just... All right, well, I'm excited. I'm be watching for the sways, people. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Uh, Paul, you'll be doing sways though, right? Yeah, I think I will. I might just do one, you know, for the whole trip or whatever. But. I'm thinking Google Photos does this whole thing automatically. Um, yeah, I don't know, but do they offer a? Can you publish a like a? Yeah, a you get a link. Or something? Yeah. You get a link. I don't know if you can embed. I have to play with that a little bit. Yeah, I think you can actually. The, the yeah, new so. Google Photos has, you know, you can share to Facebook. You could share to Twitter. You can get a, 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 a URL, so you could. You know what they don't app. have on the web version for some reason? It's in the apps. Uh, is just a slideshow button. <laughs> you know, like I know. Unless they fixed it, I, I don't know. It must be no, just a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm sure they'll be adding features, but the thing is, I want to use that collection thing yeah. that they do, where they put yeah, the map yeah, yeah. in and they show all this, sure. and build some build some things. You could basically yep. it's like Sway. You just do it every day. It's very similar mm -hmm. to Sway. All right. I'll yeah, see you in three have a weeks. Great time. Thank you. Four weeks. Yeah, have a great trip. Yeah. I'm looking forward to yeah. seeing photos. So. Thanks. And Make the, it all happen, you, Leo. You, sh you show up here <laughs> next Wednesday. Father Robert Ballasier will be hosting Windows all right. Weekly. Yep. Take care. Bye-bye.